Hi, it's Kip K from Make Magazine back with another weekend project. Right now, there are millions of television sets on all across the world. In fact, according to the AC Nielsen Company, the average American household watches about four hours of TV a day, and that's with over 300 million television sets in the United States alone. Well, there's tons of programming from satellite providers to our cable systems, and sometimes with all those channels, it's still difficult to find quality programming like Make TV, for example. Well, there's a lot of things you can do with your TV other than watching programming. You can obviously hook your computer up to it and play video games. Well, today we're going to go retro as we build a cellular automata video synthesizer on today's weekend project. The Cellular Automata Video Synthesizer Kit is packaged up with everything you need to build it and all you really need is a soldering iron and some solder. But I thought I'd share some of the things that I also use on my bench to build some of the projects. Uh, you always want a little helping hands. Now this is a device that's got a couple of alligator clips. I don't know what happened to the second one on mine. but a couple of alligator clips to hold circuit boards and a magnifying glass, which I usually end up putting on some super strong reading glasses uh, to see up close for some small circuits. And of course, you need a soldering station, and mine happens to be a Weller WESD 51, and it's got uh, changeable tips on it, so you can uh, put in a variety of different tips on this, and it's also temperature controlled so you can set the temperature for whatever you want for your project and then I also use a uh, I use a copper scrubby that I got at the dollar store and uh, cut that up and put it into a little container and I use that to clean my soldering tip uh, it's basically the same thing that you'll spend seven or eight dollars for uh, in the stores or online to clean your soldering tip and of course some solder. I use a 60-40 blend of light duty resin core solder and I found that the uh, .032 diameter solder uh, is the best for most projects and it comes in a variety of thicknesses. And you may occasionally need a desoldering device or in this case it's a solder sucker and they make these, uh, you can buy them up to six, eight hundred dollars for ones that heat and also remove solder at the same time. But this is basically just a sucker. You would heat the solder up and uh, remove the solder joint and then dispose of the empty solder. And also you'll always want to use some type of fan or uh, circulation to suck up that nasty solder smoke. And this uh, happens to draw the solder smoke in through a filter and then exhaust it out the back. So some basic things you need for some of the projects. So now let's build the Cellular Automata Video Synthesizer. Now this kit, along with most kits in the Maker Shed, include a contents of everything you'll need to build the project and then also assembly instructions, which we'll be using to build it. And also in the case of this and most projects, the printed PCB, your circuit board, uh, has the notations on one side, but you'll actually make your solder connections on the other side of the board. Now, some of the components, like capacitors and diodes, are called polarized, which means they have a positive and negative side and need to be soldered in the correct way on the board. Other components, like resistors, are not polarized and can basically be soldered in on either side. The first thing we're going to do is solder in the IC sockets. Now, the purpose of the sockets is so that the actual IC chips themselves can be replaced later if need be. Okay, we've soldered in our three sockets and also soldered in our diode. And again, with the diode, make sure that you solder it with the stripe facing the same side as the stripe on the PCB. Now we have a bunch of mylar capacitors to solder in, and these are non-polarized, so there's no positive or negative. Now we have 16 resistors to solder in place. Again, these are non-polarized, so either end can go in either hole. Now we're ready for the two electrolytic capacitors. Now these are usually always identified by the negative side with a stripe, and also the longer lead is usually always the positive. 
We've installed our caps, our crystal oscillator, and also our 7805 voltage regulator in our board. We're almost done. The remaining components are some potentiometers, a couple of push-button switches, the power jack, and our audio and video connectors. So we'll put those in now. Okay, our PCB is done. The last remaining step is to install the ICs. Now again, match the notch on the IC with the notch that's on the IC socket. And sometimes it takes a little bit uh, to get those in there. They don't always fit the first time. So double check your, uh, each of your leads and make sure that they're going in nice and tight and straight. Okay, we've hooked up our video cable and our audio cable and now we're going to supply power to our cellular automata video synthesizer. And it immediately begins displaying very cool random patterns and these can be controlled by three different potentiometers which we installed, the rate, the rule, and the width. Now by adjusting all three, you get some pretty crazy patterns. And that's how you build a cellular automata video synthesizer. We'll see you next week with another weekend project.